Welcome back, everybody. This is week six of our graduate statistics course at the University of Cincinnati. This is video lecture two. We have stopped the prior video checking if we, you know, with a quick check of our understanding of the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And we decided, knowing we applied the idea that almost 100% of the data is between mean plus three standard deviations and mean minus three standard deviations to mark letter B for this particular question. Now let's move on and apply this idea to our example. So we said that the problem that we have at hand is that the college admissions officer received an application of a student, Pam, whose score, uh, whose SAT score was 1800. Imagine the officer has no historical experience with this exam to determine what is typically a good score. So we want to answer the question of how well she was ranked. And we have some information about the population of all test takers to figure this out. We have the mean SAT score, 1500. We have the standard deviation of SAT scores, which is 300, and we know that the score is normally distributed. With this information in mind, here is the normal distribution, and we know that PAM score is right here, and that the mean is right at the center, 1500. Now what we want to know, what, what we can immediately in this case decide is that her score is exactly one standard deviation above the mean because 1500 plus 300 is 1800. And this is, we know also that between minus one standard deviation and plus one standard deviation, we have 68% of the data. And then the rest of the other 32% would be divided into this side and this side, right? So if 68 is in the middle, the distribution grabs 100. Uh, 60, 100 minus 68 is 32, but because it's symmetric, I'll put 16 on this side and 16 on this side. Given that, I can easily compute the percentile here of Pam's score, right? If I have 100 minus 16, I get here precisely at her percentile. So the percentile is 84, she's on the 84th percentile. Does that make sense? If we have 100 all over and we apply the, the rule, because this is the standard of how data is distributed and spread, we know that 68% is in between one standard deviation minus one. So we know that there is 16% on this side. So we know the total is 100%. So if we subtract 100%, from 100% to 16, we get right here at her score and get the percentile uh, that we want. So she performed at the 84th percentile. Pretty good. So this means to be at the 84th percentile means that Pam performed better than 84% of SAT test takers because performing better means a higher number. It's not always the case. If it's in a race, lower scores are better. But in this case, lower scores are worse. So she performed better. Being on the 84th percentile means that she performed better than 84% of the sample, right? So let's move on. So a college, uh, now is the other question that we want to ask is whether Pam's score is exceptionally high or atypically high. That's not, you know, remember that for in French statistics, we want to know these likelihoods. Is this, is this just, is this typically part of the distribution or is this harder to be seen in that distribution? So again, we have all of this information and what we want to know in this case is the sort of the probability of getting her score and higher. So the percentile, we think about the score in lower, right? It's higher than, you know, a bunch of people, 86% of people. 
but the score and higher, now I need to look at the other side of the distribution, the upper tail in this case. So we know we have, again, minus one and one standard deviations, 68% in the middle and 16% to one side and the other. And we know that the percentile related to the first, uh, the, the score that's equal to mean minus one standard deviation is 16, because here's zero going up to here, 16, then I sum 68 more, I get to 84. So we know all of these things. So with this in hand, I'm sorry I keep moving myself, I should just get myself out of there. With this in hand, we can understand pretty clearly that the probability of getting a score of 1800 or higher, which is this area above here, is 16% or 0.16. Remember that in statistics, there is this convention that we think of high probability as something that's more than 5% and low probability as something that's less than 0.05 or 5%. 0 0.16 is more than 0 0.05. So we want to say that this getting this score, which is a pretty good score, is not unlikely. So it's not atypical. It's not atypically high because the probability of getting it is 0.16, which is greater than the 0 0.05. And if you're thinking the 0 0.05 is a bit arbitrary, I don't have any answers to that. It is convention. It is quite low because we want to make sure we only call things exceptional or atypical if they are really, really extreme with the idea that maintaining this status quo is less expensive than doing something to change if things are working reasonably well. I know there's a lot, lots to say about that, but that's kind of the, the rationale. The rationale is people are innocent until proven guilty a, let's say, a new medical treatment should be considered non, not effective until proven different. Because then you, you avoid people spending tons of money to change things that aren't um, really reliable. That's the idea of making that cutoff really, really low. Why five and not one, not three? It's convention. So conventions, there's no explanation for them. <laughs> so let's continue. So it's greater than 0 0.05, as I said. Again, the, the, the crux here is that the score is very good, but not exceptionally high. So now another example, who did better? Imagine you wanna compare people now, but now you're trying to compare um, people that did different acceptable uh, standardized tests that are coming and applying to your school. So let's say a college admissions officer uh, wants to determine which of the two applicants scored better on their standardized test with respect to the other test taker. So Pam, who earned an 1800 on a high SAT score, or Jim, who scored a 24 on his ACT. Now stop here for a second. Of course, 1800 is larger than 24. But if they're coming from tests who have, that, that have different distributions, different means, different standard deviations, those raw scores aren't comparable. The reason being that if you are, imagine you are considering a distribution that has a mean of 1500 and you find that, that your score is 1510, that 10 above the mean does not mean the same as if the mean score was 100 and you're 10 above that, right? Being 10 above 100 seems to be a little better than being 10 above 1500, right? That seems relatively less. So we need some way of normalizing these raw scores in order to make a fair comparison if they're coming from different distributions, all right? All right, so let's do that. Here is our normal distribution representing Pam's score. And now I'm going to bring out a different distribution, but it's still normal 
right? But the center is at 21 instead of 1500. And the standard deviation is five instead of 300, but her score is uh, 24. So how do we compare those is the challenge that we have at hand right now. So here are two distributions. And we mentioned before that Pam's score was one unit, one standard deviation above the mean, right? A standard deviation is a way of normalizing and making the, 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 the score relative to something, right? It's the mean plus one standard deviation. So it's a standardized score. So if I subtract the score, subtract the mean from the score and divide by standard deviation, I get exactly how many standard deviations above the mean that score is. I know with them we could figure out just by looking, right? Because she got a score that is exactly 300 above the mean, right? So we can see that and say, oh, that's one. But what's the general formula to get to that? Well, you get the difference between the, the absolute difference between the mean, between the score and the mean. And if it's 300, you divide by the standard deviation, you get one, right? If the standard deviation was 600, right, and you have 300 uh, difference up here, then you're only 0.5 standard deviations above the mean. All right? Are we good? All right. I'm sorry. If the difference here, oh, man, if the difference here was 600 and I divide by uh, 300, then it would indicate to me that I was two standard deviations above the mean because the score here would be, say, 2100 right if the score again i'll repeat if the score was 2100 minus 1500 would be 60 600 divided by 300 would be two standard deviations above the mean um, so computing how many standard deviations above the mean is a way to make things comparable so let's compute um what's jim's score jim is score was 24, but it should be subtracted by the mean of his test, right? Of test takers of ACT, which is 25. And then we divide by standard deviation and we see that while Pam was one standard deviation above the mean, Jim was only 0.6 above the mean. That tells me that Pam did better than Jim relative to test takers of the same test. Yes? So what we did was to basically put Pam and Jim uh, and consider their results uh, in light of a standardized normal distribution. A standardized normal distribution has a mean of zero. That makes sense, right? Because if you have a score that equals to the mean, that equals the mean exactly, that's if you subtract your score from the mean, you would get zero that's where you would be so the mean of that distribution is zero so if you score right at the mean you would get um, uh, a score you would be at zero in in that distribution all right and of course the standard deviation will be one because um, that's the the unit that we are standardizing to all right so uh, uh, standardized distribution also called a z distribution is a, dist a normal distribution that has a mean of zero, a standard deviation of one, and then if I standardize scores by using the little formula and computing the Z scores, I can actually put things in context and compare, right? I can, because I don't need two separate distributions anymore, because those scores are all about how many deviations above the mean um, I am, all right? So, We'll stop here and come back for the third video. We're almost done. We might have two more tops to do. Goodbye.